fella We can be that mistake Let's do this What's up, yo? What's going on, guys? We are Embrace the Suck 21 Yes, we are I'm Spencer And I'm Daniel And, I don't know, is Happy Guy Fox Day appropriate? There's no real way to say There's no To sticker. wish somebody a Happy Guy Fox Day Because, remember, remember, the 5th of November I think does the job What do you yeah. think? I, I think so. Yeah. There's, you know, we got this Thanksgiving thing. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. Happy Guy Fox night. That's yeah. That's a lot. It's like, I just remember last year when we put out some Halloween content, like, a lot of people in the comments were saying, like, they don't do Halloween. They, around this time is Guy Fox night or, you know, 5th of November. So, yeah. uh, figure today, because it is, remember, remember the 5th of November, we would do Guy Fox and the Conspiracy of the Gunpowder plot. Just kind of re- learn more about it. Yeah, this goes under our history. Lessons. Yeah, we learning today. We learning. Yeah, uh, and it's our boy Simon. And we know if it's Simon on the <laughs> channel, it's going to be good. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's yeah, go. Let's do it, man. Remember, remember the 5th of November. The Gunpowder, Treason, and Plot. I know of no reason why the Gunpowder, Treason should ever be forgot. On November the 5th, 1605, 13 men plotted together to blow up the Palace of Westminster in London on the day when the most powerful men in England were set to meet at Parliament. The authorities learned about the plan through an anonymous letter and the terrorists were stopped just in time. The man they encountered at the scene was Guy Fawkes, who had been guarding barrels of gunpowder in the basement below the palace. If you're an American, you probably know about Guy Fawkes from the movie V for Vendetta, and mm-hmm. you most likely associate him with anarchy. This- okay, yeah. yeah. That movie was requested under our movie reactions <coughs> for yeah. this day, but we're in the middle of the, say the name of the trilogy? Cornetto Trilogy. Cornetto Trilogy. So uh, we want to f- complete that. We'll probably get to that next year. Yep. So. This association has been pushed even more in recent years with the use of Guy Fawkes masks by the anonymous organization. If you're from the UK, you already know about Guy Fawkes Night, which is celebrated every November the 5th with a bonfire and fireworks. Nearly everyone has heard of the famous gunpowder plots, but few people know details about Guy Fawkes' life or the motivations behind why he and his friends wanted to blow up Parliament in the first place. Even though this is a biography of his life, Guy Fawkes is really a very small part of the larger story. In order to fully understand the motivations behind the gunpowder plot, we first need to examine the conflicts between English Catholics and Protestants at that time. Here we go. So this Here is a we religious go. conflict, not okay. political. It, it might be political, it, but... It, it always is. Yeah. But, so Guy Fawkes is essentially like the getaway driver that they made a, a thing out of. Yeah, and yeah. He's the, the name, he's the, the fall guy. Head. Yeah. He's the fall guy. He's the fall guy. That's the good way to put it. Yeah. For a large part of human history, the most powerful religion in the world was the Roman Catholic Church. If a country was Catholic, its citizens looked up to the reigning pope as their religious leader. And in the minds of some, this authority was more important than the loyalty to their actual king or queen, because whoever has access to God has access to your mortal soul. In a lot of ways, the Protestant Reformation was a way to remove all of the power being held by the popes and bishops. It was sort of like cutting out the middlemen for the average person's access to God. Because, you see, Catholics are taught that if you want your sins to be forgiven, you have to tell a priest every bad thing you've ever done in confession. A priest is sworn to secrecy, kind of like a therapist. But even so, everyone had the knowledge that these men held all of the deepest, darkest secrets of their congregation. Confession, it wasn't just encouraged, it's mandatory, and even the smallest sin left unsaid could mean you're going to hell. On top of that, Catholic mass was said in Latin, so everyone needed to study the language. For the uneducated peasants, they needed to rely on a translation from their priest. Basically, the religion is set up in a way where priests and the Pope were given a huge amount of power over their congregation. In 1558, Elizabeth declared that there should be a settlement, which declared all English citizens must convert to Protestantism. Uh. Bishops that were formerly a part of the Catholic Church must renounce their loyalty to the Pope if they wanted to live. It was now mandatory for every English person to go to Protestant church services every Sunday, and they were taking attendance. If anyone... Ooh, wow. Now remember, Spence, these are not... These are the... 
the building blocks of which we know these establishments as today. Yeah. So these are much different establishments that he's talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, like, you know, I hear forced to go to church and, like, I cringe in American. <laughs> I, I hear forced to choose one religion and I cringe. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm like, oh, you don't do that. Mm -mm. Never ends well. No, no. For Either way, it's, a, it's bad juju. Yeah missed one too many services they were fined or even sent to jail what? after hearing about this pope Pius v excommunicated elizabeth from the catholic church in 1570 he commanded a papal bull that encouraged all catholics to depose her basically this meant that they should no longer be loyal to their queen he called her elizabeth the pretended queen of england and the servant of crime wow. you can really see why this was problematic because catholics in the country were now seen as enemy agents people in the lower classes they were quick to convert to protestantism they could not afford afford to pay the hefty fines and many of the illiterate peasants couldn't speak or read latin anyway it was an easy choice to make and a symbol that they were loyal to their queen but for the educated people of the upper class this was not such an easy conversion for one thing this was taking away the freedom to choose their religion and there were plenty of people who still truly believed that the catholic church was the one true church these people they were called recusants which mm. comes from the latin word recusare which means to refuse for these people who broke the law and continued to practice their catholic faith they believed that they were fighting for their immortal souls is quite the motivation since so much of the religion relies on a priest to say mass and give confession recusing catholics began to hide priests in their homes this it was completely illegal and harboring a priest was punishable by death oh if a family God. was catholic the royal guard would show up unannounced at all times of day and ransack their homes looking for hidden priests upper class catholic families who refused to attend protestant mass they continued to pay expensive fines to the point where they were losing all of their families and many english catholics they Ooh. were forced to move oh my god that's that's tough hiding a priest in your house like this obviously this is the time for you know cell phones and you know you can uh communicate and take pictures <coughs> and word would get around quickly yep now you know i'm just i'm just trying to think of like in the if you you were tasked to go find a house that had a Catholic priest in it, like it's a 50 50 chance you wouldn't find that priest because someone could tip you off and you had it's your word against theirs. It's yeah, this is just a dark moment in human history, quite, quite a dark you know, moment. Um, it's putting classes at odds against each other, uh, and for political gain. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, it's never a good under idea. Under the guise of religion. Yeah. Never never a good idea. You don't you don't you don't you don't ever fuck with people's religion. Yeah. You don't fuck with their religion, their money, or their political beliefs, or their ways of getting food. Yeah. That's it. That's four right there. Yep. So you just I, I just man. Okay. Alright, so this so it's building. And remember, we're not obviously we're not choosing sides. This is no. just what happened. We're just we're just taking in the information and giving feedback on it. Yes. Yeah. Like <laughs> you need two dumb Americans is <laughs> reaction in twenty twenty two to it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. somehow you you still clicked on the video. Yep. So this is on you. All right, yep. Moved to Flanders, which was a safe zone. After Elizabeth I's death, the Scottish king, James VI, took over the throne and became King James I of England. Catholic citizens had no idea how his reign would be any different than Elizabeth's, and they waited to see what would happen next. Who is this guy? Let's see. So Who is this not guy? much that is known about Guy Fawkes' childhood, except that he was born in 1570 in York, England, to Edward and Edith Fawkes. His family had been Protestant, and his father even worked for the Church of England. They were law-abiding Protestants who went to church every Sunday. His mother came from a long line of Catholics, but right. she chose to give up her Time faith out. in favor of conforming. Just, just, to, just for our, just for our sake of mind. Okay. All right. Fifteen seventy. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, what are you looking up? Uh, all right. So this is only seventy-eight years had passed since Columbus found 
yeah. the new world. Yeah, that's not that's not a long time. <laughs> so that was happening as yeah. well. Guy Fawkes' father, he died when he was eight years old, and his mother was a widow for years before she decided to marry a Catholic man. They began practicing the faith in secret, and they baptized Guy and his siblings in a secret ceremony in the St. Michael Le Belfry Church. He attended St. Peter's School in New York, which had a lot of recusing Catholic teachers and students. He was able to attend Mass in the homes of people who were hiding priests. As an adult, he chose to continue practicing that Catholic faith, and he became passionate about trying to protect it. At some point, Guy Fawkes is said to have gotten married and had a son. There are records from 1590 that a man named Guy Fawkes married a woman named Maria Pollet and a birth certificate shows that their son, Thomas Fawkes, was born. When Guy Fawkes was 21 years old, he would have been old enough to take out his inheritance. That same year, there are documents of a lease and a three and a half acre piece of land and home being signed by Guy Fawkes. This included the stamp of an image with a falcon, which was his family crest. He entered the service of Anthony Brown, the first Viscount of Montagu, as a footman. At that time, working in the service of a lord was considered to be a very respectable job among the lower class, especially compared to being a farmer. But for whatever reason, Brown did not like Guy Fawkes, so he fired him. Back then, your reputation was everything, and it must have been difficult for him to get another job without a good letter of recommendation. He managed to work for Brown's grandson after Anthony Brown's death. From the records, it would seem that he struggled to maintain steady employment. So at 21 years old, he left England and moved to Flanders. He fought together with the Spanish army to do his part in the 80-year war. At that oh, time, wow. Spain was considered to be the protector of the Catholic faith, and during the war, they were fending off Dutch Protestants in the Netherlands. While fighting with the Spanish, decided to go by the name of Guido. He was described by one of his compatriots to be of excellent good natural parts, very resolute, and universally learned, and was sought by all the most distinguished in the Archduke's camp for nobility and virtue. This is something that wasn't taught in American schools. The whole religious wars in uh, the 1500s in Europe. I am just learning this now. You know, my... Here, here's my thing. Why, why would it be taught? I don't know. Why, why would it be taught? Like, here's... This is the fault of the school systems. Answer us that. Why should it have been taught? We were, I, I think, this should have been nestled in to European history. Yeah. I, I, obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. But our country is going through the birthing stages. Yeah, yeah. During this. Yeah, like, I mean, didn't even, I mean, I don't, we know Christopher Columbus didn't discover America. But like, he discovered the Caribbean islands. Yeah. Like, so, well, I, I, I feel like the 13 colonies oh the 13 colonies were like, they were like way after at least 150 200 years before after after this F yeah. yeah yeah so they didn't come shit to was the 1700 shit was brewing in the caribbean yeah yeah <laughs> the rum trade all of that <clears throat> yeah yeah People say that he was very tall and muscular. He had reddish brown hair and a beard and was basically described as being the perfect soldier. Despite having these descriptions, no one knows what Guy Fawkes truly looks like because there was never a portrait painted of his likeness. We only have the caricatures that depicted him after his death and these were mostly drawn in such a way that made him look like a villain. In most images, he has black hair and a beard with an upturned moustache. Gunpowder plot. After King James I came into power, Catholics waited with bated breath to see what would happen next. A recusing Catholic man named Thomas Percy was a cousin of Henry Percy, the eighth Earl of Northumberland. Even though he was not a lord himself, Percy was able to take it upon himself to request an audience with the king. He asked for mercy on behalf of English Catholics. Wanting to gain popularity with his new English subjects, James was vague and made sure not to make any promises. It was still very early in his reign, and he was not sure yet what he should do about the tensions between Protestants and Catholics. He essentially told Percy not to worry because he personally had no ill will towards Catholics. Percy believed that King James was going to offer some kind of relief and that he might be getting ready to repeal Queen Elizabeth I's laws. Percy was very happy about this and he returned to tell his friends and family that they no longer had to worry about being persecuted for their faith. Some even hoped that maybe James would convert to Catholicism and that the entire country would revert back to practicing the one true faith. 
For about a year, English Catholics were able to live a normal life. James temporarily stopped collecting fees that recusant Catholics were required to pay for skipping the Protestant service. He also did not push for his guard to search Catholic homes for harbored priests. However, the laws made by Elizabeth I were kept in place. He had not repealed them because he was waiting to see what the reaction would be from his Protestant parliament. In the summer of 1604, the members of parliament, they finally noticed that Catholics were not being persecuted anymore, and they began to push King James to come down hard on them. The way they felt about the Catholics was similar to communists in the Cold War. Many of them believed that if they were not stamped out, they would cause an uprising. So James brought back the same laws that Elizabeth I had put in place. Suddenly, Catholic homes were being searched once again, and they were being treated like criminals. The Catholic people in England, they had lived so long being oppressed, but the thing that triggered their anger was the false sense of hope. They felt betrayed by King James, and it was enough to make some want to kill him. Mm. Even though Guy Fawkes is the one who is most remembered for the gunpowder plot, the ringleader was actually a man named Robert Catesby. He began making plans in 1603 and first recruited a man named Thomas Winter. Catesby and Winter, they rode to Spain because they had associates who were Catholic there. Spain was also designated as the protector of the Catholic faith. Since Catholics were being persecuted once again, they begged for help from the Spanish to stop King James from killing their people. However, the Spanish, they were not interested in getting involved. Denied. Catesby and Winter, they returned to England and decided if they were going to find someone to help, it would have to be at home. The people they found were John Wright and Thomas Percy. Winter had gone to school with Guy Fawkes, and he seemed like the perfect candidate to help them out with the plot. After all, Fawkes had plenty of experience fighting in Spain, and he knew a lot about gunpowder. Fawkes was smart, and he knew how to stay cool under pressure. In May of 1604, the five men were spotted together at London's Duck and Drake Inn. They whispered about their plot, and they swore an oath of loyalty and secrecy. The group was biding their time, trying to figure out the finer details of the plan as time went on. Thomas Percy had the resources to purchase a property in London that was very close to the Palace of Westminster. Guy Fawkes uh -oh. began to live with him, posing as a footman named John Johnson. This way, they'd never seem out of the ordinary to anyone John who Johnson. witnessed them around town. Yeah, these days, if you went by John Johnson, you would like, think something is up. Like, mm, what's your name, John Johnson? Mm -hmm. mm, is it? Like, okay, we'll just go with that lie. And all the names mentioned so far, like, doesn't really ring as much as Guy Fox Knight. Yeah. Yeah. He definitely has the coolest. Yeah. 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 Guy Fox. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At that time, it was not uncommon for men to buy gunpowder, especially if they planned to sail overseas. They needed the powder to use their guns and cannons and defend themselves from pirates. The only problem was that they'd need to buy small quantities over a long period of time in order to not raise suspicions. Guy Fawkes would use his connections to slowly gather a cache of gunpowder barrels that were left over from ships entering the harbor and bring them back to Thomas Percy. At the time, the Palace of Westminster had a collection of smaller buildings. Lords and members of the upper class would come and go from these buildings on a regular basis without being stopped by security. The rules were very relaxed, and it was actually easy for Thomas Percy to rent a storage space in the basement below the palace, claiming that it was for his cousin, the Earl of Northumberland, to store firewood for winter. The day of Parliament kept... Wow. wow. That lack of security, that blows my mind. I, I mean, times were simpler then, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you know, like... We're looking at it from a 2022 perspective here, yeah, so... Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Valid point, I guess. I need a place to store my, my, my wood for winter so you don't die because you don't have any fucking heat. That, that'd be and, like if you wanted to store it in the bunker below the White House. Like, why? Why? We have 24-hour storage units now. We're in one right now. Yes. Yes. And we don't have any firewood. No, we We're don't. Fucking we lost. have it, it's somewhere in here, but it's yeah. a heater. We have a heater. We do. Thank God for modern technology. Getting delayed, and the group of conspirators grew from five to thirteen men. Unfortunately for them, though, the extended time, combined with the greater number of people who were being told about the plot, meant that it was far more likely that the secret was going to get out. A Catholic man named Lord Montagu was preparing to be present at Parliament. 
A masked man handed a letter to one of Montego's servants, and it was presented to him immediately. It said, My lord, out of the love I bear to some of your friends, I have a care for your preservation. Therefore, I would advise you, as you tender your life, to devise some excuse to shift your attendance at this parliament. For though there be no appearance of any stir, yet I say they shall receive a terrible blow. Even though it was late at night, Lord Monteagle quickly told his servants to ready the horses so that he could deliver the letter to Robert Cecil, the spymaster and secretary of state to King James. Historians have debated over the theories of who actually wrote the anonymous letter. It could have been one of the 13 conspirators. It may even have been Monteagle himself writing a fake letter after hearing letters through the Catholic recusant grapevine. He was awarded £500 per year for his loyalty to the crown. Back then, that was a small fortune. Even more historians believe that it was Robert Cecil. He was the spy master after all, and some believe that he knew about the gunpowder plot for a long time and orchestrated the entire scene to make himself seem like the hero. On the 4th of November, there was an extensive search of the Palace of Westminster. At first, they didn't find anything that concerned them, and they were beginning to believe that the letter was a hoax. But later that day, it was brought to the Royal Guard's attention that there were cellars underneath the palace that had not yet been searched. A royal official named Sir Thomas Nivet was told that one one of them was being used for storing firewood, so he led a group of royal guards to search the area. When they arrived, they found Guy Fawkes guarding the firewood. Instead of wearing the clothes of a watchman, Fawkes was dressed in his riding boots, spurs, hat, and cloak as if he was getting ready to jump on a horse at any moment. They moved the wood piles aside to reveal 36 barrels of gunpowder. The royal guards searched him and found a box of long matches. For All right, I'm no expert on gunpowder, but... I think that could destroy a building. 36 barrels. I mean, shame it, he couldn't have gotten 40 or 50. <laughs> you know. What a royal shame. Times huh? times were tough. Yeah, you had to make do with what you had. 100% he was immediately arrested. On November the 6th, King James wanted to meet Guy Fawkes face to face. He interviewed him, asking if he had any regret. He genuinely wanted to know how anyone could be so ruthless and be willing to kill so many people, even the young children who would have been present at Parliament. Fawkes said that his only regret was that his plan had failed. Fawkes still called himself John Johnson and he refused to give up the names of his co-conspirators. King James ordered that Fawkes be tortured and interrogated. He was suspended by... He even... Being suspended, Guy Fox knew snitches get stitches. Didn't give up nobody. Oh! Manacles and then put on the rack so that his arms and legs were stretched and popped out of their sockets. Ugh. He eventually caved and gave his confession. In the before oh. and after of his signature, we can. Man, I thought he was gonna be a true gangster here, but apparently not. He arms sung out like of a sockets bird. are still arms out of sockets. Yep, he sung like a bird. Ugh. And wrote like a like one too. Yep. See that he could hardly write his own name after enduring so much pain. While Guy Fawkes was being tortured, the rest of the conspirators, they were on the run. Robert Catesby began to announce to the villagers that King James was dead, and he called for the Catholics to rise up and reclaim their rightful place in the kingdom. They rode from town to town, but instead of the huge army he expected, there were only about 40 men who decided to follow him. Ironically, Catesby and his men, they accidentally blew themselves up with their own gunpowder that they'd brought with them. <laughs> Without Guy Fawkes there to help them with his expertise, they thought that in order to dry out the damp, they should sprinkle their gunpowder in front of an open fireplace. It exploded, of course, and <laughs> one of the men went blind. The <laughs> How dumb can you be? Oh, my God. Oh, you hey, are. It's not, it's not like... Gunpowder was this new fucking invention either. It had been around for quite some time, yeah. right? Come on. The rest were now burned and injured. One man asked Robert Catsby what they were going to do next. He replied, we mean here to die. On November the 8th, the sheriff of Warwickshire showed up with a small army of 200 men. There was a shootout between the two groups. The weakened Catholic men did their best to go out fighting, but it was clear that the king's guard was going to overpower them. Robert Catsby was shot, but he crawled to the nearby chapel. He was found on the floor of the church, hugging a statue of the Virgin Mary. The men who were left alive were taken prisoner and sentenced to hang in the gallows along with Guy Fawkes. So that happened on the 8th of November. So why is he not remember, remember the 8th of November? Because no one gives a shit about the losers. Just the attempters. I guess so. I guess so. Death and legacy. Maybe this will clear it up.
On the 31st of January, 1606, Guy Fawkes and his fellow conspirators were found guilty of treason, and their punishments would have been to be hanged, drawn, and quartered. This meant that a man was dragged through the streets before he was hanged in the gallows. But just before he was about to choke to death, they would let him go. As he gasped for breath, they would dig a knife into his stomach and pull out his entrails. Then Ugh. they chopped off his arms and his legs while he was still alive. Then the four quarters of the body were taken to the four corners of England. As Guy Fawkes stood in the crowd, King James declared that these Catholic traitors were trying to blow up the entire island of England. This would have been physically impossible, of course, but it was enough to make the people extremely angry. They were screaming and booing, calling him a traitor. Before they could torture him, Guy Fawkes jumped, breaking his own neck. Even though he was not alive to feel the pain, they still went through with cutting his body apart into pieces. The gunpowder plot had very nearly succeeded, and if it were not for an anonymous letter, Guy Fawkes may have actually succeeded at lighting the fuse. If the barrels of gunpowder had exploded, it would have been powerful enough to bring down the palace and the nearby buildings. It would have killed the king and the princes, as well as some of the most powerful noblemen in the country. This would have left the throne to James's daughter, Princess Elizabeth. They had hoped that, since she was so young, she would be easy to manipulate as a sort of puppet. Many believe that Robert Catsby would have eventually gotten more Catholics to follow him, and this would have erupted into an English civil war. After this incident, Parliament passed the Thanksgiving Act of 1606, which was a law that English citizens must pray and give thanks to God that the terrorists did not kill the king. Uh. That day became known as Guy Fawkes Night, or Bonfire Night, and it's celebrated every year on November the 5th. People usually celebrate by building a large bonfire and burning life-size dummies of Guy Fawkes. There is also a fireworks show to symbolize the explosions that never happened. Since then, everyone has always remembered the 5th of November. All right. Fucking awesome. Hell yeah. Finally some insight. Yeah, we finally have a bit of a reference point as to what happened and why the 5th of November is so important in British history. And I guess it's a good excuse to buy some fireworks and blow some shit up, which as two red-blooded Americans, I think we can appreciate. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Um, so, Simon, again, man, biographics, two thumbs up. Always comes through with the history yep. stuff. He's yep. our he's our go-to when it comes to history shit. You know, it, 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 he is. Yeah. Earlier, yeah. you were asking me, when can I come over for a fire? I'm thinking the 5th of November. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yes. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Yes, definitely. Thanks in advance for those comments, liking, subscribing, hitting the bell, and sharing with your friends. Definitely, guys. And until next time, wash your hands, scrub your toes, Wipe your ass, blow your nose. Remember, remember, the 5th of November. Embrace the suck. And unplug and uh, light some bonfires. Hell yeah. See y'all next time. Later.